Hey everybody, it's James Lindsay. You're listening to the New Discourses Podcast. I want to talk about social-emotional learning again, but this one's a little bit different. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go through a uh, typical woke document or something like that. I'm not going to talk off the cuff specifically, but it's going to be kind of barely both of those. What I'm going to do, actually, I want, I want to go through and kind of riff off of a, a phrase attributed to Benjamin Disraeli, which was um, that there are three kinds of lies, lies, damned lies, and statistics, which, of course, is a comment on how uh, statistics can be manipulated in order to bolster bad arguments or stupid ideas, or they can be uh, manipulated to basically make a lot of different kinds of arguments that they don't actually support. And so in this case, what's happened um, is that, just to give you a little background, the state of Iowa, in fact, uh, a state senator there named uh, Senator Salmon, uh, Senator Sandy Salmon, uh, Republican Janesville, Iowa, uh, district has forwarded a bill to end, to ban social emotional learning, and in particular, the organization CASEL, C-A-S-E-L, the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning from the state of Iowa. I was invited to testify at the kind of subcommittee hearing uh, regarding this bill, and I unequivocally said that we should be getting rid of SEL and that I therefore support this initiative. Um, A representative from CASEL wrote in and wrote a number of... uh, you know, cute corporate boilerplate sounding distortions, including something along the lines of 95% of uh, school districts or something like this in the United States use Castle as though jump everybody jumping off of a bridge is a good justification for doing so yourself. Um, there are lots of reasons why Castle is so widely implemented that primary reason is the Every Student Succeeds Act, which was passed in 2015, partly based off of lobbying that was pushed by uh, CASEL itself, or representatives from CASEL, mandates the reporting of at least one non-academic competency. Rather than now dealing with educating students, we have turned education in the United States, by the way, into the collection of something called competencies which are supposed to be measurable and reportable. Uh, You might remember various programs in the past that have built up to this. For example, No Child Left Behind and Common Core. These shifted, so it's George W. Bush and then Barack Obama for the administrations responsible for those two two changes. So this isn't necessarily a Republican or Democrat thing. It's, if we want to make it political, it's a uniparty thing. Um... What, what you had happened was this slow shifting to competency-based education. So we're going to identify certain competency areas, and we're going to make sure the kids have competency. We're going to make sure the teachers are teaching to the competencies. You hear about teaching to the test. Well, now it's teaching to the competency area. And the goal in the long run of this educational shift is, in fact, to treat these competencies kind of like micro degre- micro diplomas or micro deg- degrees or merit badges, really. Uh, but it's kind of more sinister than that because it will operate a great deal like a social credit system. The idea will be that, that people will come out of various grade levels in schools, high school, college maybe, and they will have you know, acquired various competencies. Those will be stored in what's sometimes called a digital backpack, which is a similar thing to a digital wallet, but for educational competency measurement and other things like health records, possibly. And um, those competencies can be used and may be used, and some people would insist that they will be used as uh, kind of passport devices to be able to participate in various parts of the economy or to be able to participate in various parts of society if it were to go that far. Uh, For example, you might think, well, we wouldn't want somebody getting into engineering school or going off to be an engineer unless they have their calculus competencies up to scratch or whatever. So rather than this kind of bland thing called a degree, which is um, that you get at the end of, say, four years, five years of university study, uh, that says that you're a competent you know, introductory level engineer, and then it's up to firms to hire you and decide if they can mold you into what they need at their firm. 
or if, you know, based on what they did, you know, think now you're going to have these much more specific competencies that are going to tell people allegedly what you're good at. And you're thinking, well, okay, physics, mechanics, um, statics, dynamics, calculus, differential equations. These are okay. You know, you can actually measure things, but we also have the problem that, uh, the economy of the future we're told endlessly is based in these social and emotional skills, these so-called soft skills. And so while we might have things like mathematics competencies or calculus competencies more specifically, or maybe even differential calculus competencies even more specifically, not sure how granular they would, would want to make that. They could make it as granular as they want with these kind of digital backpacks. But we'll also have things like LGBTQ ally competency, social awareness competency. In other words, are you aware of the systems of power that structure society? Equity competencies, inclusion competencies, sustainability competencies, competencies in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations. You can see where this can go off the, the rails real fast. They can get into some dark areas. Are you actually competent in race relations sufficient to be hireable and not be a so-called legal liability under our distorted interpretations of the Civil Rights Act and what would be called the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment if it were not for the fact that it's being treated as an equitable protection clause. By the way, just speaking kind of legally, we have an Equal Protection Clause in the 14th Amendment, and we do not have anywhere in the United States an Equitable Protection Clause. And that's sort of at the root of how a lot of this woke garbage has conquered um it conquered its way into a lot of institutions using uh, liability distortions uh, on bad jurisprudence that are not actually uh, distinguishing clearly enough between equity and uh, equality and understanding the equal protection clause in a vague way that enables them to tr misrepresent it as an equitable uh, an equitable protection clause, which is assessed via disparate impacts. The idea is that equality is only truly being achieved if we can measure it in terms of equal outcomes or equal impacts, as they call it. And then they shuffle that around and say, well, if everybody's actually equal, if nobody's actually discriminatory, if everybody's actually, you know, truly equal, and then you have disparate outcomes by racial group or by sexual group or whatever, then it must be the fact that access and uh, at various levels, in other words, some kind of discrimination is occurring if you're seeing unequal outcomes and you assume equal inputs. That's their twisted logic. And that's not um, a good way to go about things. So anyway, I've digressed. Uh, social emotional learning has been built around the idea off of this competent, er, built around and under this competency-based education model. And the competency-based education model will include social skills, emotional skills, personal management skills, possibly, probably, if we look at the trajectory of what they've actually talked about, and we look at the roots of social emotional learning, spiritual skills, and these will all be defined not in the generic. But you think, well, I want my kids to have social skills. No, no, no. They're going to be defined in terms of inclusive social skills to foster a sense of belonging, which we all know is going to get passed through the woke or equitable lens. They're going to have sustainability and environmental skills. Well, you want your kids to be environmental. Responsible. No, no, no. They're going to get passed through the lens of the sustainability agenda pushed through United Nations Agenda 2030. They're already explicit at the NEA, at the UNESCO, at the United Nations uh, about doing this. They're already, I'm not exaggerating, they're already explicit that this is what they're doing with education. So this competency-based model itself is the problem. And by the way, not to get into this whole fight yet again, school choice doesn't fix that. That's a market problem. If the market is ruled by, the hiring is ruled by a competency-based access question, then the schools, whether universities, whether private, whether public, whether high school, whether junior high, doesn't matter, whether homeschool, whether micro school, whether uh, it doesn't matter, charter school, you, you name the type of school, it doesn't matter. Their job will be to foster and achieve those competency merit badges in the digital wallet so that the children that they're graduating can go on and participate in the economy. For those of you who've listened to my extensive comments on critical education theory, you will realize that they've reverse engineered the model that they believed education was based on, the so-called problem of reproduction. 
that the existing society educates students to participate in the existing economy, and then the existing economy demands students that are educated into that economy, and therefore the society reproduces itself through education by producing people who are going to go out and uphold the existing economy. They've reverse engineered this now. So they're now transforming how you get into the economy using things like ESG and so on based off of this very convenient competency scoring model. And then if you don't have the competencies, you don't get to participate. So the schools are going to produce the new situation with the children so that they can plug into the new economy. Do you see how elegant it is? Do you see how evil it is? And so SEL is actually designed and through this increasing competency-based education model, No Child Left Behind, Common Core, now into social-emotional learning initiatives through CASEL, Social emotional learning is designed to facilitate this on an extreme level, and it's just another step in this direction toward it won't matter if we have woke or competency-based or whatever. It won't matter. Once the whole competency structure is in place, it won't matter if we use social emotional learning. It won't matter what tools we use. The goal will be that we have to make education tailored to the specific competencies that the public-private partnership running the whole show um, demands. And it doesn't matter what kind of school you go to because your participation, full participation in society, maybe you're not allowed to go to concerts. Maybe you're not allowed to eat in restaurants if you don't have a satisfactory LGBTQ ally score. If your competency is weak, maybe your passport turns from green to yellow to red to orange or something in between. And you're just limited in what you can do unless you go take some, you know, online training courses and get all the right answers to their, to their brainwashing program. How do I think that this could possibly be the case? Because I've seen, I've been to China. I know how their social credit system works. This is how their social credit system works. And this is what those competencies would enable people to do, to lock you out of while inviting you to just do a few things, get your attitudes right, and then you can enter uh, various aspects of the economy or society. It could be the economy itself as in uh, getting a job, or it could be actually the broader sense of the economy in the sense of being able to participate in it. Maybe you're not allowed to have Starbucks until you have a better score in terms of race relations. And so you have to do some CRT courses on your phone. They're going to track and see whether or not you got the right scores. Maybe it's going to have, you know, you're going to have your little galvanic skin sensor around your wrist that's tracking your heart rate and your skin conductance and some other things. Decide how engaged you were in it. And if you really got into it and really accepted it, or if you just checked off some boxes, I mean, this is some dark stuff. And social emotional learning is a key step in this. And blocking this kind of thing, although it's kind of like trying to staunch a, a, an arterial wound with your fingers uh, by blocking castle is actually a big step in the right direction. Th these, this whole program has to be questioned and re rethought, but at least we can say this thing that's designed to facilitate that program can be stopped and, and challenged. And so this is what we have. So um, Senator uh, Sandy Salmon from uh, Janesville, I'm assuming I'm saying her name correctly. It's spelled like the fish. Um, in, in, in Janesville, Iowa, has put forth this bill, and there's some friction around it. So I, I, what I was going to do in this episode, Lies, Damned Lies, and SEL, is go through this article that was published uh, on the 13th of February this year, so just very recently, um, in Iowa starting line. It says, Your Home for Iowa Politics. I confess to not knowing very much about Iowa local politics, so I don't know how substantial this article is, but it was posted on February 13th by Ty Rushing, and it's titled Explainer. So rest easy, everybody. The, ex the, the experts are here to explain. Explainer, what SEL really is and why this senator wants to ban it. Okay, so it's a little story. What I want to do is go through this, and it's called Lies, Damned Lies, and SEL because I skimmed through all of this and read most of it already. So some of this will be exciting as I go through it for the first time. Um, it leaves out a lot of the truth about social emotional learning and paints a very rosy picture. Now, if you're not familiar with the general meme, I really need you to understand the general meme of how woke sells itself. It always sells itself in a pretty box that contains something horrible. And if you look at the outside of the box, it looks great. 
Social emotional learning is no exception. Critical race theory is no exception. We're just teaching honest history. We just want kids to understand race. We want racial justice. Sells itself in a box that looks really nice, wrapped neatly. You get inside and it's something horrible. In fact, it's Marxist brainwashing or Marxist manipulation or just outright Marxism or a gateway to fascism, depending on the circumstances. Not that those things are that different right now. And if you don't understand that, you're going to get tricked by the packaging every time. You're buying some slick looking product that's crap every time. Um, a great meme format, I've mentioned this before, I think people should make them, is the sales pitch, you know, kind of two panels left and right, what SEL says you're getting on the left and something pretty, and then on the right, what SEL really is and something horrific. Uh, ideally, kind of meme style images. I think these should be proliferating right now to help people understand because that's the biggest deficit right now. Everywhere I talk to people, I, by the way, I talk to leaders in education, whether they're in the, uh, um, they're in the, the school choice, you know, kind of organizational, institutional think tank kind of space. I've talked to a lot of these school choice advocates, strong school choice advocates, talk to people in state governments in various positions at various levels in very red states, very famously red states, who have never heard, who have the same thing in common with these other folks, which is that they've never heard of Castle. They don't know, they don't know their assholes from their elbows about what's going on in education. And they're the ones that are our primary line of defense about this stuff coming into our states. Luckily, Iowa Senator Sandy Salmon seems to know something about it and has taken a action to do something about it. So I'm going to go through this and show you how much they leave out and how much they leave to be desired. Now, what I'm not going to do, so don't get too excited, I'm not going to go and dig up tons of sources I didn't prepare in that way for this podcast. I want this to be more comfortable, uh, kind of free-flowing conversation approach. I didn't go find massive receipts. We all now know I could. I've done like 10 podcasts on SEL. I've read extensive documents on SEL. Um, I'm not going to go through and find massive receipts and refute every point in tremendous detail. That's not this podcast. That's another podcast we can do some other time. But let's just go ahead and read this article and uh, see what SEL really is and why this senator wants to ban it. And it starts with Iowa Senator Sandy Salmon R. Janesville is hellbent on removing social emotional learning, SEL, from the state's public schools, and she has a small but vocal, politically motivated group of supporters backing her. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that small but vocal, politically motivated group of supporters who are backing her are Moms for Liberty members primarily in Iowa, who reached out to me and alerted me to this bill in the first place and asked me to testify on his behalf. It says Salmon introduced a bill to ban the Iowa Department of Education from promoting SEL and chaired a Senate subcommittee that voted to move the bill forward. Okay, so as I said, there's this bill. It's very short. It's very simple. We're going to ban Castle. We're going to ban SEL from the state of Iowa at the level of its Department of Education. And um, there was a Senate subcommittee, and she chaired that to make sure that the bill would advance. And as far as I understand, the bill did advance. I testified on in favor of the bill advancing. The senator and her supporters, so I'm part of this wild band of supporters, by the way, although I'm not an Iowa local. I did go to Iowa. It was fun. I got to walk across the Skunk River uh, in Ames a number of times. It was pretty. It did not smell as advertised. It was a nice trip. Um, I got yelled at by people at Iowa State. Uh, it was fun. The senator and her supporters say SEL is a backdoor to promote LGBTQ ideology, which is misspelled, a tool for indoctrination, a violation of some parents' political and religious beliefs, teaches morality, so we have another grammatical failure here, and it contains critical race theory, a legal framework that is not taught in Iowa's K-12 schools and that was already prohibited. Well, that was a train wreck of a sentence, wasn't it? Um... I love when our defenders of education write train wrecks of sentences. Not that I'm, all of mine are perfect or anything, but um, the senator, let's see, is it a backdoor to promote LGBTQ ideology? Uh, survey says, yes. Uh, 
It is. As a back door isn't actually really the best way to put it. The best way to put it is, I mean, I've said that it's like a hypodermic needle that injects these things, like critical race theory and LGBTQ ideology. So I don't have to get redundant. I'll bring that up now. Does it contain critical race theory? Yes, it does. It contains the praxis of, it contains, in fact, more importantly, the lensing of. You see, so when you teach children about, in social emotional learning, there are these five broad areas of competencies. Those five broad areas are, if I can remember them off the top of my head, see if I can do it. They are self-awareness, self-management, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness. Now, when we hear social awareness, if we know that this is being taught through an equity and inclusion lens, which we know it is, partly because social emotional learning through Castle is explicitly transformative social emotional learning, and it is explicitly geared toward creating critical consciousness, and it is explicitly tied to the critical consciousness of these identity factors. So we know this. We know that it is a social justice-driven ideology. We know that Linda Darling Hammond, one of her, one of the primary people who's been pushing for SEL in the United States all along, wrote the foreword to the Handbook of Social Emotional Learning, and that she said that it's a vehicle for creating critical consciousness, and in fact that to be socially and emotionally compliant or competent within a school is in fact to embrace Paulo Ferreri's radical critical pedagogy, and in fact, his method of so-called humanization and transformation. So when we hear something like social awareness, we know that you are going to have to be aware of being inclusive and equitable in terms of LGBTQ ideology and critical race theory. We know that that's the case because they say it's the case, not just in practice, but it is. Of course, this article tries to paper over that because it's already prohibited in Iowa to be doing critical race theory in schools. So they call it a legal framework. What we also know from the very first pages of Critical Race Theory and Introduction, which was written on the high school level because it's not in high schools or anything, uh, in 2001 by Richard Delgado and Gene Stefanczyk, we know that they said that Critical Race Theory began in law. It got its name in 1989, so we're 12 years out from when it was named, although uh, Derek Bell's original CRT piece kind of considered the first real CRT piece was Race, Racism, and American Law in 1970. We also know that in the 60s, in fact, though, that we had things like the, pro, the forerunners to critical whiteness studies, which is kind of part of critical race theory being written at, say, University of Oklahoma uh, by people like Patricia Bidall and by people like Judith Katz. Um, so this is, we, anyway, not, we don't have to get digressed into these years and all this. What we do know, though, as that Delgado and Stefanczyk said in the first pages that while it began in law, it rapidly spread to other, other disciplines. And the first one they name is education. The next thing they say is into political voting strategies. And I've repeatedly made the joke that we didn't know that Stacey Abrams was going to appear in this book, uh, you know, 20 years early. But here we are. Uh, education system. So that was in 2001. That was 22 years ago. In 2001, they published a book saying it was already rampant in education. But that's because we know that Gloria Ladson Billings, another ma major education critical race theory activist who is still alive and working today, still man manipulating school systems and districts at the level of state boards, including Virginia's today, we know that this woman is still doing this, wrote in 1995 three crucial papers that bring critical race theory into education. The first one is called Toward a Critical Race Theory of Education. This tells you exactly what it's about. Another is toward a, if I get the titles ex not quite right, it's, I had surgery yesterday. Let's, let's deal with it. I'm just doing my best here. But it's uh, toward a uh, theory of a, what is it, culturally relevant pedagogy. So she's talking about the development of culturally relevant teaching or culturally relevant pedagogy, which embeds CRT through the Paulo Freire framework that we also know that Linda Darling Hammond explicitly said is what social emotional learning is based upon. And that was back, by the way, ha Darling Hammond told us a hyphenated last name, Darling Hammond, told us that in 2015 before transformative SEL was invented in 2019. So this has been going on for a while. The third one was, a, but that's just good teaching, and, and it was in defense of culturally relevant pedagogy, uh, which, again, explicitly brings CRT in through the Ferrarian model into education. Culturally relevant teaching is Paulo Ferrari's method repackaged to be based off of not uh, colonization and Marxist economics, but critical race theory. 
I'm sorry, it's just that simple. Gloria Ladson Billings told us this very clearly. That first of the three papers I mentioned toward a critical race theory of education, by the way, was published with William Tate, the fourth, not on her own. So yes, it does promote so-called LGBTQ ideology and critical race theory. In fact, what what it does is it creates a framework through topics like self-awareness. Guess what it means? Guess what LGBTQ ideology does in schools is it teaches you to be aware of yourself and the fact that you might be queer and that you need to be introduced through preparatory introductions to alternate modes of kinship. That's from the Drag Queen Story Hour paper and alternate modes of being that's rampant throughout queer theory and the uh, limitations and challenges of childhood innocence that's rampant throughout queer theory and education as we've heard in, in past podcasts it teaches you you have to be aware that you might actually be secretly queer and that's why there's drag queens in schools that's why the pornographic books are in schools that's why they are pushing all of the gender bred person the gender unicorn etc is as what freire called generative themes to get the children to start asking and talking about this at which point the teacher feels justified to bring up lgbtq ideology such as what we call gender ideology which is social constructivism of gender or gender constructivism or gender social construct has real names it's not really called gender ideology that's what its opponents call it or queer theory which is its real name but also critical race theory all of this is going to be past social awareness self-awareness self-management responsible decision making relationship skills those are all going to be passed through lenses of equity and inclusion and how that equity and inclusion, and in fact with the LGBTQ ideology, initiation, literally in their own words, say Eve Sedgwick's words, is that the point is that queer theory holds intention, innocence versus initiation. We know what they're up to. SEL becomes the tool by which those things are going to be passed. So all of your academic lessons, you're not going to sit down and have a legal framework lesson about critical race theory. You're going to sit down and have a math lesson. And that math lesson might contain a word problem. And that word problem might contain a setup that has the possibility that if the teacher engages in the right kinds of dialogue through the Frarian dialogical method with the children, somebody might bring up a race-related point, at which point you can have a CRT conversation about the structural realities of race and use it to conscientize people under culturally relevant teaching. That's how CRT and LGBTQ ideology are tucked in. But primarily, I mean, just listen to the five competency areas of Castle. Just listen to them. Self-awareness. What is your race? What does your race mean about you? What is your sex? What is your gender? What is your sexuality? What does that mean about you? You have to be aware of yourself and your social position as determined through the systems of power in which you are embedded, even if you didn't ask, which are imposed upon your society and how that works. You can see immediately how it becomes a woke lesson. So that's the first competency area, self-management. Well, you have to make sure you know how to manage yourself. You can't talk to people of different identity groups like you would talk to somebody else. You can't, because what if you did something offensive? You have to learn to manage yourself. So if somebody of a you know minority race or whatever insults you due to criti through critical race theory, you're not allowed to just speak back. You have to be sensitive to the racial dynamics at play and the way that that speaking up and speaking back constitutes you know a form of subtle microaggression or or even just outright injustice against people of you know, that are that belong to minoritized groups. So. Those two, responsible decision-making. Well, you have to make your decisions responsibly, which means in line with equity and inclusion. You can't make a decision to hold a party that you didn't you know, make sure was going to be equitable and inclusive. You can't make a decision to attend a club without making sure that there was room for people who don't look like you, etc. Relationship skills. Well, how in the world are you going to navigate these relationships if you aren't totally aware of all of the power dynamics? That's literally the point or half of the point of Robin D'Angelo's entire so-called theory of white fragility. And then social awareness. Do we even have to talk about how that one's going to turn into LGBTQ ideology and uh, critical race theory? So definitely. Is it a tool for indoctrination? Well, I think that that actually doesn't go far enough. It's a brainwashing tool. If you study what CR, oh, sorry, what social emotional learning is, and then you study what they did in the Maoist brainwashing uh, prisons and schools, actually mostly in his schools, you see that the parallels are striking. They're not even like they're not even hidden. Mao based his entire program off of what he called the model of unity, criticism, unity. We know about this. 
We've discussed this on the podcast. So unity, you create the desire for unity, and then by how? By showing people that they aren't living up to it. So you accuse them of being racist, sexist, transphobic, insensitive, bigoted, etc. Make them feel bad. Tell them they're not including people. Punish them for this. Or you create dynamics where certain people are affirmed and accepted and other people are not as affirmed and accepted. They're held in contempt or whatever. So you get a desire to be in unity with what? People who accept the ideology that this article says isn't part of the program, and then you manipulate their social and emotional skills to get them into that position. And then what do they do when you get them in? Well, you bring them into struggle sessions. You bring them into a situation where you criticize them for their uh, short-sightedness, for their selfishness, for their whatever, bourgeois values, their white supremacy, their transphobia, their homophobia, even if it's latent, even if it's hidden, even if it's internalized. So maybe they're gay and they are still uh, homophobic or whatever and internalized homophobia. Maybe they're a woman and they think that being a girl is okay, so they have internalized sexism or something like this. And uh, then you pressure them and make them uncomfortable, but you tell them that unity lies in adopting the ideology when everybody in the ideology is getting affirmed. So you bully people who aren't and then you accept people who are and you create a tool for brainwashing, not indoctrination. Indoctrination comes along with, though, you are... When you do the Frarian method that's at the heart of the social-emotional learning approach, as Linda Darling-Hammond told us, when you do that, what you're actually doing is that you are bringing them into not just this kind of emotional and social roller coaster that I explained. The point is to get them geared up for the process of study. Uh, You want them to study the doctrine of, in this case, woke. You want them to study why racism is systemic. You want them to study why sexism and homophobia and transphobia work the way the LGBTQ ideologists say they do. So in that case, you are actually indoctrinating them into social constructivism, or in fact, critical constructivism, and awakening them into what's called a critical consciousness. So it is a tool for not just brainwashing, but indoctrination. So the senator and her supporters so far are batting a thousand on this. A violation of some parents' political and religious beliefs. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. It is not a parent's political beliefs to have their kids go to school and learn leftist interpretations, equity, inclusion, and sustainability interpretations of everything in their lives in place of their mathematics lesson. Using the mathematics lesson merely to set up the conversation in what Ferrari calls a generative approach. It's simply a violation of their political beliefs, but religious beliefs as well. Why? Say, well, if it's injecting LGBTQ ideology, the gender unicorn, the gender bread person, etc., you're asking them to affirm a belief uh, in a particular uh, view, which I would in this case call queer Gnosticism, which is a religion, um, a sort of a cult religion about how gender works, which is in direct violation to, say, Christian teachings, Jewish teachings out of the books of Genesis, or book of Genesis, I should say, and, and the two faiths, uh, Muslim teachings, etc. In fact, there's actually not a religion in, in except for some of the pagan religions uh, that uh, support the idea that men can become women and women can become men, except also Gnosticism, for example, in the Gospel of Thomas, where it explicitly says, the the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas explicitly says that. Um, But it is definitely a violation of a parent's religious beliefs. Teaches morality. Well, yeah, of course it does. That's what the equity, inclusion, and sustainability lenses are. It's teaching people how to be a good person in social and emotional ways. So, yes, and the morality is the leftist cult, which is sustainable, inclusive, and equitable. In other words, it's woke with the environmentalist and the climate change religion tacked into it uh, and woven into it is a better way to put it. So yes, it does. Um, So it turns out that the senator and her supporters say that SEL is a backdoor to do a lot of things when it turns out to be, in fact, all of those and worse. Here we have a quote from Salmon, who clearly knows what she's talking about, and uh, says, quote, the delivery vehicle for all of this now is what's called transformative SEL, transformative social emotional learning, end quote, Salmon said during a February 2nd Moms for Liberty town hall. She is correct. We've covered in, in extensive depth here on the New Discourses podcast. I've covered in extensive depth in writing, in talks, etc., that in fact, it is the case that transformative SEL is the dominant form of social emotional learning promoted by Castle right now. This comes on the back of a push into what was called civic participatory SEL, which was derived allegedly from a so-called whole child approach to personal responsibility based social emotional learning interventions, which evolved over time. It's also systemic. It's not 
any longer being, you know, something that happens si uh, like off to the side of the curriculum or even as a fact of curriculum, like 30 minutes a day of SEL class. That's not what's happening. It's being woven into the other subjects. So Salmon is completely correct and informed here. Salmon told the crowd, it, it says, she's only against transformative SEL. Here I diverge with with the good senator because there is no good SEL. Uh, transformative SEL is merely uh, this current manifestation that's now getting very explicit, but social emotional learning back to its roots, where it was colonized out of whole child education from James Comer, which I've now looked into more since I talked about it before. This has been an operation ever from all from the beginning to get all kinds of into aspects of children's psychology and social environments and to uh, do this kind of um, indoctrination and brainwashing. There's nothing good. There are ways that you can interact with in professional environments to deal with children with their social and emotional issues that might be related to learning, but there's absolutely no justification for any program called social emotional learning, and it's outside of the school's purview, period. But the delivery vehicle, quoting, I'm oh, sorry, Salmon told the crowd she's only against transformative SEL, and she said the same thing in her newsletter, but her bill would stop the Iowa Department of Education from mentioning SEL in any form. Well, this if I may, Madam Senator, is why you don't go halfway with these people. You're only against this one thing, but now here they're calling you uh, calling you ridiculous because you're going to ask for way more. No, you're actually against the whole thing. You may not realize all the details. It goes on to say also the word, quote, transformative doesn't even appear in her bill. And so what's happening here is they're trying to say that she's obviously not being honest about what her intentions are. She doesn't, they want to keep as much ground as they can now that they're under attack. And, um, she gave them the opening to do so. Then there's this weird thing. It says what's really enter in a dash and it doesn't finish this sentence. I assume the word is interesting, but there's no more what's really enter. And then it's almost like the writer interrupted himself with a question in bold face. So is Senator Salmon right about SEL? I don't understand why there's this hanging beginning of a sentence that doesn't clarify anything. But anyway, it goes into this new format from here, which is this question and answer, presumably with himself, herself, itself, they self, fish self, tree self, whatever the frick this lunatic's pronouns are. So is Senator Salmon right about SEL? And the reply Oh, hey there. As if, you know, coming back from their reverie of interruption, like they were talking, right? Like this is a weird thing to do. Let me try to use two voices to, to give you a picture of what I'm actually reading on the screen here. Salmon told the crowd that she's only against, quote, transformative SEL, and she said the same thing in her newsletter, but her bill would stop the Iowa Department of Education from mentioning SEL in any form. Also, the word, quote, transformative doesn't even appear in the bill. What's really enter? So is Senator Salmon right about SEL? Oh, hey there. It's like he's talking to this um, she, it, tree, bird, queer, queen, Frank, hot dog. I don't know what, what what's your pronouns. Um, talking, it's like he's pretending that he's in this monologue and somebody interrupts him with a question and then, oh, wow, you're here. This is all happening instead. This is like, this is actually a symptom of something called schizoid personality disorder, which is not a surprise. It's a really weird thing to have put in this article in the Iowa starting line. Very strange uh, stylistic approach. Oh, hey there. The short answer is no. Is Senator Salmon right about SEL? The short answer is no. Well, no, it appears to me so far that the short, an short answer is mostly yes, but she actually isn't bold enough to go far enough um, for whatever reason, politics being what it is. Uh, he, it, she, bird, tree carries on. The Iowa Department of Education's website lists five key parts of SEL. Self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, relationship skills, and responsible decision-making. See, those are the Castle 5 competency areas. Just like I said, I should have just like spun down here and read them and started trying to remember them off the top of my head, but I did I did really great. In fact, I remembered them in the correct order because they are in a correct order. They are a progression and they are not in the correct order here, but um, that's irrelevant because the questioner, the imaginary questioner now interrupts again it says cool you threw a lot of words at me but what's sel mean in plain english and it says quote i'm assuming it's quoting from the castle website it is okay oh no sorry 
that's from a castle representative. Put really simply, let me just change the word really to two. Put too simply. You remember that thing, the Mott and Bailey, it comes up a lot? It's just this. It's just that. It's not a brainwashing tool. It's just this. It doesn't have critical race theory. That's just a legal theory. You know, that whole game where they pretend that there's this totally defensible thing this is what they really mean when in fact they're doing something very radical and they don't want you to realize it? This is what's happening here. Put really simply, let me do my SEL representative voice. Put really simply, see, it's saccharine. It's disgusting. They're being nice while they're being evil to you. So you can't just slap them. Don't slap people. I'm not advocating violence. Put really simply, social and emotional learning is really the way that we develop important life skills to help us navigate all parts of our lives. So these are skills like communicating effectively, like practicing curiosity, or staying motivated and making decisions that benefit ourselves and other people, end quote. That's how Justina Schlund of the Collaborative for Academic Social and Emotional Learning, CASEL, explained it to me. She even gave me an example of how it could be used in the classroom. I'll come back to that. So that voice I did, by the way, that saccharine voice, did you notice what I said in it didn't say anything? They always do this. They say stuff that sounds good but doesn't say anything. What is social emotional learning? Could you explain it in plain English? Put really simply, what? It's how we develop important life skills. Like what? That help us navigate all parts of our lives. Sounds like snake oil. Sounds like a big promise that a guru would make or a religion. It's going to help you navigate all parts of your lives. Never addressed anywhere in this is why in the world the school should be involved in it in the first place. Now, they do have an answer for that, and it's a bad one. It is a dialectical inverted answer. If you've been following my podcast, you know that dialectical inversion is when they lie and say all the different things are really kind of the same thing, and theirs is the only good one. And it goes on. So these are skills like communicating effectively. Okay. So the school has to like dedicate, like, are we talking about a communications class? Like what? No, you're talking about talk circles and support group activities. Like practicing curiosity, practicing curiosity. These are the least curious people I've ever seen in my life. What are they talking about? We're staying motivated and making decisions that benefit ourselves and other people and other people and other people and other people because it's collectivist and other people that benefit ourselves. It should say through benefiting other people because it believes that by benefiting the world, we benefit ourselves. And so it says very little here, but it also never addresses the fact of whether or not the school should be doing this. So why in the world does the school think it should? Well, it turns out that handbook of social emotional learning, which is a painfully unfun 560 pages or the 80 pages to read, tells you why from the very beginning. See, it's always happening. They tell you right from the beginning. Social emotional learning is always happening in schools. You remember uh, Gloria Ladson Billings talking about culturally relevant teachers? It's just good teaching. It's stuff that's already always happening anyway. We're just going to codify it, make it formal, and make sure that we avoid all of the disorganization and the problems that you have. And that's the same sales pitch they give for SEL. In school, you see, they're already teaching social and emotional skills. They're already teaching communication implicitly by having kids raise their hand, get in front of the class, you know, interact with other students. They're already teaching it. Why not make it formal and put it through a lens like equity and inclusion and, and sustainability? They're already trying to teach kids to practice curiosity, but they're so bad at it with their model of education where it's boring for so many students that why not make it about imagination and imagining and reimagining the world in a different way and staying motivated and making decisions that benefit ourselves and other people. See, that's always happening in schools. That's their excuse, but it's not always happening in schools. When I went through the schools, we did not explicitly do social emotional learning. We did not explicitly hijack math classes to do social and emotional lessons that have to do with social politics topics through Marxist lenses. We didn't do any of that. Their request to be able to codify what they claim is already happening. In other words, to turn the implicit explicit is a dialectical maneuver that says that their program is basically what already happens in schools. So we're going to devote resources to making it more explicit and real. Well, you know what? Guess what? You don't have to actually make everything explicit and like that. You don't have to. It's not beneficial to make everything explicit like that. And it's not beneficial to reorganize it and use it as an excuse to turn it into an explicit program where there are particular lenses by which communication effectively, you know, like not talking the wrong way to a minority or um, not microaggressing or whatever other inclusive bullshit you want to work into it. 
there, it turns out there are lots of ways to to bring in a program that, that is not what should be going on in schools under the um, under the aegis of these kinds of very vague uh, saccharine uh, claims and requests or, or justifications. So anyway, that's how Justina Schlund of the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning explained it. Now, there's every uh, every chance, by the way, before we get mad at Justina Schlund for being a dirty communist liar, as we probably could and maybe should, we maybe shouldn't, because it turns out that there's, I don't know Justina Schlund, but I do know that some executives at the council have spoken with some friends of mine, and my friend's assessment is they don't know their assholes from their elbows and don't have the slightest idea that they're pushing communist garbage. They A lot of them at the top of Castle, just think that's good teaching, just like Gloria Ladson Billing said with her deliberately Marxist program that she was calling culturally relevant teaching. They have no idea that they're pushing literally Maoist brainwashing using tools like queer theory, so-called gender ideology, and critical race theory, and sustainability theory from the United Nations, and comprehensive sexuality education rooted in queer theory and gender ideology. They have no idea that that's what they're doing in many cases. I don't know if Justina Schlund is that way or not. In other words, I don't know if she's feeding this a line of bullshit or if she's actually just that ignorant and stupid. Turns out that there is enough plausible uh, gray area here that we don't know. Um, But here's the example she said about how SEL could be used in a classroom. Maybe I'll answer with a different one. You've heard it before. But she says, "Let's." this is not a quote, by the way. This is paraphrased. Let's say you're a third grader getting frustrated by a tricky math problem. Instead of getting mad and giving up or acting out in class, you would pause, reflect, and try a different approach to solving the problem. So that means teaching mindfulness. It means, hey, are you having an emotional reaction? Let's do something different. You know, all those kind of like very inspiring scenes you see with tutors and parents who are making breakthroughs and occasionally like the stand by me or stand and deliver or whatever teacher it is, stand and deliver, I guess. I get my movies mixed up sometimes. I don't watch them. Um, All that inspiring crap that they envision themselves to be. Uh, But the question is, is that really what you should be doing in class and how much of it? Is that really what it's about? It says, or you could work at work with a partner or in a small group, which a lot because group work in schools is really freaking great, right? This, in practice, like you have this vision that like all these little kids are going to come together and try, but everybody knows that it's like one kid's doing everything and everybody else is pissed off or screwing off and the one kid's getting more and more mad. Or you could work with a partner or in a small group so you can practice your communism that doesn't work, which allows you to practice your collaboration and teamwork skills and learn to listen to another person's perspective on the situation. I've done zero group activities in classrooms that have ever worked that way. Zero. I don't know how many I've had to do, but zero I've ever worked that way. Once you have an answer to the problem, you could share it out loud with your class as a way to practice communication skills. That is so thin and stupid, but here's what really happens. This is a real example from a real SEL training, courtesy again of Jennifer McWilliams. I've brought it up many times. She shared it many times. I have her permission to share it. I'm glad that she gave it to me. It's in my book, Mark's Creation of Education. I considered it so important. I've said it repeatedly on television. I've said it in talks. I've said it on stage. I've said it everywhere. Said it to Ben Shapiro recently. Um, It's a simple word problem. Johnny is riding in the car with his mom and dad on the way to an amusement park. The amusement park is 50 miles away. They've driven 30 miles. How many miles are there left to go? So there's a tricky math problem for second graders, not third graders, granted. And what the teacher is instructed under SEL to do is to bring up the idea of amusement parks, to raise engagement, to get the kids interested, who's ever been to one. And then the next thing you know, Some kids raise their hand, some kids don't. And the next question is, well, why is it that some of you have been and some of you haven't? How come some kids don't get to go to amusement parks? Well, my parents said no. So now you can have a conversation, a woke conversation about parental authority. Maybe it's better if the school makes those kinds of decisions. Maybe you guys should be able to make decisions for yourself. Don't you feel like you could make those decisions? Or maybe some people can't afford it. So you have a conversation about socialism. Well, you know, maybe that somebody brings up, well, maybe black people can't afford it because they've already had some CRT introduced. And now you're having a conversation about about CRT. Uh, Maybe the mom and dad thing gets brought up to all families. You know, when you ride in the car with your family, is that always your mom and dad? Well, no, I don't have a dad at home. And now you're having a conversation about feminism. My mom has a girlfriend 
now you're having a conversation about sexuality uh, on woke terms. The inclusion and equity and sustainability lens keep coming back. And in sustainability, should you be riding the car? Shouldn't they be taking public transportation or something? Is that the best way to get to an amusement park to go have fun? And now you're having environmental conversations with the kids in place of the math class. That's actually how it's actually going. They're not even so much teaching kids just to be mindful, but let's say they are. So your kids and they're learning like meditation, self-reflection techniques, and instead of learning some grit, and it sounds great. And again, the packaging sounds awesome. Yeah, I want my kid to reflect and not get frustrated and give up on math. But life turns out to be boring in many regards and hard. And a lot of development and growth requires struggling through boring, hard things and suffering through them. And so it's not always about some clever little mindful hack to get around it. And so you're taking that away. But the question is, not even that. The question is, should a teacher who's up to their freaking eyeballs in woke horseshit be doing this with your kids? Should that be the person teaching you, teaching your kids mindfulness? Should that be the person intervening in your kids' social and emotional experiences in class? They can't teach these kids friggin' arithmetic. These kids can't read. We can't, they can't read basic stuff. They can't successfully teach the kids to do very basic skills. And we see the numbers across the board bearing this out right now. Do you really think that they should be pretending to be psychologists dealing with frustrating issues with math where a lot of the kids are, some of the kids get frustrated, but most of the kids don't. I remember when we used to do multiplication, you know, exercises in, in, in grade school and even in beginning of junior high where a lot of the kids did not get frustrated uh, like three or four kids are maybe struggling. And so now you're interrupting the whole friggin' class to teach the whole class to be mindful because a few kids tend to get frustrated and you're weaving that in as part of the mathematics lesson or history lesson or whatever. This is actually complete. When you start to unpack what's actually there, when you get inside the pretty box, what's there is completely inappropriate and completely, um, ridiculous. And so of course I'm at, I try to picture myself getting put through this. Like I was good at math. We had our 4M tests. Can you answer 100 basic uh, 12 by 12 multiplication problems in under four minutes? And, you know, you got to get a prize if you could pass, if you did your 4M test and you got a 100 on it. So you have 100 questions are worth one point each. If you could get all 100 in four minutes, then you're, you know, you get some prize. And so you're practicing your memorization, which the woke hate any rote memorization. But in fact, your multiplication tables are pretty much at least up to 10 by 10 are rote multiplication. They are rote memorization. Um, you could work them out with addition, but they are, you can work them out, but that's not the point. The point is that they are rote memorization and there's actually benefits to practicing rote memorization and recall and other things too. The woke hate these things. But the point is if I had to waste my time, I was good at math. I got Lots of 100s on the 4M test. It was a moment of pride when we got to the 4M. We were even giving some kids like 3Ms because some kids were getting down to the three minutes they could get through all of them. And it was like this kind of like nerdy thing. It's kind of like the thing if you want kids to want to be academic, have academic mastery that you want them doing, right? But some kids struggled with it. Some kids never made it. And if I had to sit through 30 minutes of trying to figure out how to make those kids feel better, I would just be mad at those kids. I would resent that. I could have done another test. We could have learned something interesting. Like... Here you have a class that I'm actually interested in for once in math class in sixth grade. And now I have to sit through this horse shit and I don't even get to do the one class that I like has to be about like reflecting on my feelings because some kids are getting pissed off that they're not good at practicing. And I know these, I know these kids. I know that I went home and practiced my multiplication tables. I know that I went home and wanted to be good at it. And I know those kids didn't. This is some communist horse crap. It's not the school's position to be doing this. This shouldn't be happening. But what is, what is the summary of Justina Schlund carry on? Essentially, oh no, another it's just weasel word. Essentially, being able to understand and manage one's emo un own emotions. Remember, this you're going to have these teachers who are dancing on fucking TikTok, who don't know how to teach a kid to add numbers together, can't successfully teach them to read, Teaching their teaching your kids how to manage one's own emotions. Woke, they can't manage their emotions. They're freaking narcissists. Look at the videos, and you you hear libs of TikTok. Uh, Kaya uh, Raichek, you, you hear her talk, and she talks about the number of videos that she has that she can't even publish. Not because they're so inappropriate, because there's too many of them. Because you can't beat the dead horse that far into the ground. 
every school system, every district. These teachers are emotional bass. You have teachers trying to get affirmed in their sexuality by third graders. This person is supposed to teach your child to manage his own emotions. Are you shitting me? This person belongs in therapy or an asylum, not in a classroom. And that's the person that social-emotional learning advocates are going to stick in front of your kid to tinker in their social and emotional. You have this maybe platonic ideal of a caring and loving teacher. No, they're fucking woke idiots. They came out of woke indoctrination programs in schools overwhelmingly, colleges of education overwhelmingly, who are there for weird reasons like wanting to affirm themselves, wanting to be that one gay role model for the three gay kids in the school that are now 25% of the gay kids because they created weird social incentives to want to do that with the brainwashing program. This thing in practice is a disaster. You do not have the platonic ideal of Socrates or who the hell ever sitting there teaching your children in a very responsible way or an actual like, would you send your kid to a therapist right now? Hell no, you wouldn't. You know how long you would, if you care about your kid, how long you should shop around before you settle on a therapist? You take out Sturgeon's Law. Sturgeon's Law says 90% of everything is crap. It's a cute way to phrase it. We consider the top 10% of things good. Okay, so you're already at a 1 out of 10 therapists is good at their craft kind of you know thing you'd be looking for for your child. But now you have the problem that therapy is woke, and most therapists under the age of 50 are woke, and the ones that are not woke are getting squeezed out of their profession, they're getting shamed, they're getting pushed out, they're getting ostracized. So you have woke woke therapists. Okay, now now take away the professional training and put it in a teacher who went through the College of Education and got indoctrinated in woke bullshit and education theory and Paulo Ferreri, and that teacher who's making a TikTok video after class about how they illegally are holding up a pride flag in the classroom uh, or teaching critical race theory and nobody can stop them even if it's against the law in Iowa. That's the person that's going to help essentially be able to help understand and manage one's own, your children's own emotions, especially at a young age. The people are writing papers, speaking of young ages, that what they're targeting is the idea of overcoming childhood innocence and bringing them into a position of initiation. Initiation to what? Well, a fucking cult. That's who's doing SEL, or that's what SEL is designed to facilitate in your poor teacher, who you shouldn't necessarily be mad at because your teacher is being forced to do this, um, is dragging them through this. That's what the program is designed to do. What else? Sorry. Essentially, being able to understand and manage one's own emotions, especially at a young age, helps a child set aside distractions and be in the best spot to learn and interact in a productive way with other people. It turns out there is another thing that does that, which isn't called this coddling mindfulness bullshit. It's called discipline. It's called discipline. Uh, Discipline is actually taken off the table entirely for this touchy-feely, self-esteem-driven horseshit that we know causes school shootings. Let's just be real. Let's just be real about this crap. Because it's way, way, way too far gone. This packaging on the outside is not acceptable any longer. Quote, What the research has shown is that when they approach learning in this way, it actually deepens their learning and engagement in the academic content, Schlund said. So it helps them be more successful in the classroom. Well, if we actually go look at the research that she's referring to, what it actually says is that children that have better social and emotional skills do better in the classroom because it actually increases the level of engagement. But did you see the trick? Did you see the switch? It's children who have those skills do better, not children who went through their program do better. Their program shows no signs whatsoever of improving academic outcomes. Look at our reading scores. Look at our math scores. Look how happy our children are. Are your kids happy because of this crap? No. I hear reports out of Iowa specifically, out of these districts specifically, about children being dragged through some kind of a book series, grades three through five, that some dystopian novel, shadow people, shadow children, something like this. I haven't checked into this myself. And they're coming home depressed because they're being, those, those lessons are, those, those books are already dystopian. It's talking about all these poor, something like, you know, you're only allowed to have so many kids. Again, I don't, I haven't read these things yet. And so then there's illegal kids and they're the shadow children and they have to be, you know, 
they have to sneak around and get secret food and they, they're not allowed to live and their parents are in trouble and there's like all this, you know, dark and dangerous stuff. And so people are being taught that you have to share your food with the shadow children and kids are coming home depressed about how dark and dank the world is. And it turns out the days that they come home dark and dank are the days that they went through this book and then they're getting lessons. They're talking to their parents like, well, we have to set aside food in case there's shadow children. I can't eat all of my dinner. I have to be able to share. And they're getting lessons on world hunger and in, in consonance with the social, uh, sorry, with the sustainable development goal number two, which is already being worked into the schooling. What is hunger? In kindergarten, says UNESCO and the NEA uh, in the curriculum guide about bringing so, uh, sustainable development goals into the classroom through social emotional learning. So what's actually, are your kids happy? Is social emotional learning making your kids happy? No, of course it's not. They talk about these Inappropriate themes, not just sexual, but dying, death, hunger, starvation, misery, dystopia with children that are like eight and younger, young children at a young age. So they can teach them to manage their cognitive dissonance and emotions. This isn't, this is not okay. So what the research has shown is that not what she said, not what she said. This is a standard trick pulled by the social emotional learning bullshitters. Research has shown that children with better social and emotional skills perform better in academic settings. What it does not show is that the programs that they are, the interventions that they are implementing improve social and emotional skills at all because they have a weird definition for what social and emotional skills look like. It means going through struggle sessions and being uh, equitable and inclusive and belonging and constantly anxious about their social environment. It's exactly the opposite. It is such a disgusting lie. Can't get too mad at Justina Schlund because she probably, or Schlund, or it's spelled two different ways here, Schlund, Schlund. Yeah, the, the author of this brilliant piece spelled it two different ways, so I don't know which one's right. I'm assuming Schlund is right and Schlund is not, but here it is in print, whatever, such a good article. This, we can't be mad at Justina Schlund because it's probably Justina Schlund is too ignorant to know what she's promoting. And this is the sales pitch that she's been taught to give. And she believes in it because she's a woke idiot. This doesn't need to be here. So it helps them to be more successful in the classroom. If you ask them where's the data that the actual program that they're using makes these outcomes, you know what they tell you? They tell you it's a data-driven program. In other words, we're gathering the data to be able to find that out. I mean, they don't have the data. And the program keeps changing from personal responsibility models and to specific participatory models into transformative models. Down the road, we're looking at a possible switch into culturally affirming models, which are extraordinarily radical and insane and explicitly, explicitly Marxist, explicitly radical, openly radical. It was sent to the Department of Education, not in a report, but a rad port as a short for radical report to completely transform. This is transformative SEL and Castle are a good first step. It's a good start, but they're, they don't even get close. It's just white supremacy with a hug. In fact, it says, and so, um, this thing radically transforms. You ask them for data say, well, it's a data driven model. You're like, well, what does that mean? So we gather the data, which means they data mine your kids and then they use the data and they pass it through the same lenses, equity, inclusion, sustainability. So they gather the data. Are the kids doing better? Well, a lot of kids are saying they're depressed. Well, we need more money. And there's a massive depression problem in the schools. Turns out they say that they need more money for more SEL because there's a massive problem and SEL would possibly fix it. They don't actually have the data to support what they're doing. They have some data that is kind of hit and miss about the early whole child models in a personal responsibility context before 2011. They have some data about the fact that kids with the true accurate data about the fact that children who do have better social and emotional skills do better academically. But the best way to get that is to have a stable, healthy two parent household in a, in a reasonably safe neighborhood. That's the best way to do that and not an abusive, manipulative environment at school filled with struggle sessions and social emotional learning. And so the, this is the whole thing is turned on its head. So it turns out lies, damned lies and SEL. This is just lies, damned lies and SEL. But we're interrupted again. Did you ask anyone else? Remember, we're having a conversation with ourselves in a sort of go, cool. So you threw a lot. This was a previous question. Threw a lot of words at me, but what does SEL mean in plain English? So they talked to Justina Schlun from Castle. And now, did you ask anyone else? I did. Oh, he's so proud of himself. She, it, tree self, bird, who knows? Zezer, 
The other person was Allison Finley, the student services director for Des Moines Public Schools. Here's what she told me, quote, social emotional learning provides the skills to both adults and youth to be able to recognize and understand their emotions, feel empathy, make positive and healthy decisions, and build and maintain positive relationships with others, she said. Doesn't it sound like Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter? Yes, it does, because of, there you go. So social emotional, let's go, she, she said more, but let's go through, let's unpack some horse shit before we carry on. Social emotional learning provides the skills, does it? No, in theory it might, but we don't know because it's a data-driven process, which means they have to gather your kid's data and then pass it through their own self-justifying lenses to find out. Provides the skills to both adults and youth to be able to recognize and understand their emotions. Well, how about you learn to recognize and understand numbers? Haven't bothered to do that. Recognize and understand the letters of the alphabet and words. Maybe read cursive. Maybe understand what the Bill of Rights says. Are you working on recognizing and understanding those things? Why is it the school's business to be teaching to recognize and understand emotions? But then what's next? Feel empathy. Feel empathy. Could empathy possibly be misused in the woke context in any way whatsoever? Uh, I don't want that. I don't want them teaching my kids empathy. I don't want the school teaching my kids empathy. I want my school my my school's teaching the kid my kids to do academic things and to be decent basic citizens. I don't want them to be adding in how to be empathetic because I don't trust. I think that that's the right of the parent to determine what does it look like to be empathetic? Is there a difference between emotional empathy and intellectual empathy? Should when should empathy be applied and when should it be reserved? When should empathy when does empathy help somebody? When is in when is it good to care about somebody and when can you be manipulated by it? When is it enabling? When is it abusive? I don't want them teaching this. They've proven to themselves incapable of teaching on empathy. Empathy is a word that sounds good, but has been so toxic for 30 years that we just walked ourselves into the present nightmare under its banner. I'm sorry, you've lost your license to teach us empathy, to teach our children empathy. So social emotional learning does that on purpose? Okay, get it the fuck out of our schools. Get out. Bye. Sorry. No. I have no patience left for you people. Okay, recognize and understand emotions, feel empathy, make positive and healthy decisions according to whom? According to whom? That's what I want to know. Positive and healthy decisions. Healthy decisions about, like, what? Okay, maybe you're talking about drug use. Maybe you're talking about sex, which better be age appropriate. Maybe you're talking about, um, I don't know what you're talking about. Exercise? I doubt it. Positive decisions. Positive for whom? This matters. This matters because we know what positive decisions means under a woke rubric. We know that becoming critically conscious means that you're going to make decisions on behalf of so-called oppressed groups explicitly and intentionally. And you say, well, don't you want to help oppressed groups? No, I reject the framing of what they call oppressed groups. I reject their framing entirely of systemic oppression. I think it's bullshit. I think it's manipulative Marxist crap. And so I reject it. They maintain positive relationships with others. With whom? Is positive relationships with others what we're actually seeing in the schools? Is that what your kids are experiencing? Because I don't think it is. I see fight after fight after fight. Brutal fights. Brutal fights. Because restorative justice circles, restorative practices, not that those don't have their place at times, but as a primary means of dealing with it, where's discipline? Nowhere. Oh, we're going to talk it out. No police officers, just social workers. That's the idea. Maintain positive relationships with others. Well, it turns out when you create the woke landscape, that's a manipulative situation. You are not creating positive relationships in a genuine sense. You're creating positive, so-called positive relationships on the sense of that if somebody can make a real claim to a marginalized status, that you have to give them deferential and celebratory treatment. In other words, you're creating a gigantic incentive structure to lead kids into adopting marginalized identities. But what kind of a marginalized identity can you adopt? Well, you can, instead of just being black, you can be politically black. Instead of just being brown, you can be politically brown. Instead of being anything else, you can start to be one of the queer identities, or you can choose to start being disabled. You can choose to have a mental illness that you learned on social media. Um, now you have a problem. You, maybe you self-diagnosed it, but doctors are just a medicalizing narrative in the society, a discourse of power that preserves the existing society. So we don't need a diagnosis. Do you see the problem? I don't, I don't, so 
Allison Finley, the student services director for Des Moines Public Schools, needs to be interrogated very vigorously as to whether or not she knows what she's doing, because what she's doing here, if she doesn't, is negligent, and if she, what she's doing, if she does know, is, is evil. It's deliberate. This, is, this should be actionable to get her out of her seat and possibly do uh, major financial damage, uh, da- you know, suing for damages to the Des Moines Public Schools. This is negligent harm in, the, in a grotesque way if she doesn't know what in the world she's doing because she should know better. This pablum, this anodyne saccharine language cannot cover up the fact that you're doing negligent and deliberate harm by implementing this crap. We've got to stop this. Lawsuits need to start getting organized. The Attorney General of Iowa should be issuing guidance that social emotional learning does emotional damage to children and that parents have pathways to class and private action for those damages. And then we'll see what Allison Finley says when all of a sudden there's a legal liability that's tantamount to what's actually happening in the schools. She says it's just as important, if not more, that the adults supporting youth in schools have these skills. Oh, so it's not enough that the kids learn SEL. You've got to do it to the parents too, to the to the teachers too. You have to you have to teach adults to be SEL compliant. You got to brainwash them too. See, this is what they did with Mao. Well, that's what Mao did with children. I should say is he he got the children to get radicalized in the schools, and he sent them to go radicalize their parents. And then, of course, if it didn't radicalize their parents, he taught the children to turn their parents in, and um, bad things followed from that. This is not a road we should be walking down. Social emotional learning is the same program that Mao put in. It's just updated into therapeutic safety, harm, pop psychology language that like is befitting of somebody as deep and awesome in the world as Oprah Winfrey and her like eleven trips to Epstein Island. I'm just saying. So it's just as important, if not more, that adult the adults supporting youth in schools have these skills in order to cultivate safe, both emotionally and physically, learning environments. Are, are those are those working out for you, Allison? They're not. Where students can thrive, excel, meet personal goals, and be successful in their lives. That's easy to say, but good lord, it's not what's happening. It's not what's happening. But now we get interrupted by our imaginary interlocutor. Wait, I know what Des Moines Public Schools is, but who are these castle people? Demons. Oh, wait, sorry. Both. Des Moines Public Schools and the Iowa Department of Education SEL framework is based on Castle's work and research, which is why I thought it was important to go straight to the source. How is this article actually just about the person writing it and what a hero he, she, it, bird, queer, banana is? I, that's why I thought it was important to go to the source. Castle is a Chicago-based, nonpartisan nonprofit organization created to establish high-quality, evidence-based SEL in education. In fact, you could even say that Castle coined the term social-emotional learning. You could even say that. It did. And you don't mention, oh, it's a Chicago-based. Don't mention that it came out of the Fetzer Institute, which is a weird New Age spirituality cult in Kalamazoo, Michigan, um, that was based off of Alice Bailey's teachings explicitly and extensively. Uh under John Fetzer's, you know, program there at the Institute, which was to fuse spirituality and science in this weird new age cult thing. It doesn't mention that the Fetzer Institute's literal foundation in Kalamazoo, Michigan, literally the physical foundation of the building has a copy of the uh, lunatic Gnostic cult Course in Miracles, um, insane so-called spiritualist, new age spiritualist writing. I can't articulate yet to you how crazy A Course in Miracles is. It doesn't say anything about the Fetzer Institute or its longtime support or the fact that they still have a working relationship that they're both proud of. But yeah, in 1994, social emotional learning was coined at the Fetzer Institute by a working group there, including Tim Shriver, the CEO of the Special Olympics, uh, who's all in this big unity project now. He works on that um, very close ties to Davos and these weird things. Um, and uh, Daniel Goleman, the uh, author of the book Emotional Intelligence, around that same time, which one would think he probably profited massively by pushing in those directions from what turns out to be his crackpot theory of emotional intelligence. It turns out most emotional intelligence is a little bit of sensitivity compared, uh, combined with a lot of linguistic savvy with emotional words, it looks like, which is normal intelligence applied in a particular direction. Um doesn't mention any of that. Doesn't doesn't mention Linda Darling Hammond and her rooting in Freire and critical consciousness. 
No, it's a Chicago-based nonpartisan. Yeah, it's nonpartisan. It's not explicitly left. It's just all the way left. It's because it's not part of the Democrats. It just, I mean, Linda Darling Hammond, who is a executive emerita from Castle and who was part of Castle for many years, uh, was on the Obama education transition team and the Biden education transition team. Nonpartisan, though. Nonprofit organization. Okay. You could even say that Castle coined the term social emotional learning. See why I call it lies, damn lies, and social emotional learning? They leave out a lot of important details. Oh, it's just a Chicago-based nonpartisan nonprofit. It doesn't have a political interest. It's just that one of its leading executives for many years is the big queen bee of social emotional learning with lots of weird ties and was part of both Obama's and Biden's transition teams. Huh. Probably a coincidence. Trump must have just kind of overlooked her or something, right? We get interrupted again, though. Where did SEL even come from? Oh, maybe they're going to tell us about the, the Fetzer Institute and Alice Bailey's education in the New Age and the science of right human relations and how it, the educator of the future will be far more psychologist than he is today and that the science of right human relations will be woven into every subject like mathematics, history, uh, philosophy, and so on. Maybe they're going to tell us, right, in The Course in Miracles and all the weird channeling with the Archangel Michael and all the strange stuff with John Fetzer and all the weird money and the fact that the World Economic Forum has been pushing it very hard since at least 2015. Maybe they're going to tell us all this, right? It says, where did SEL even come from? I feel like I'm only just hearing about it. And most of the political chatter is negative. Well, I really hope that that's people's first impression of it honestly now. But he tells us it, she, bird, tree self, elf, watermelon. I don't know. What's your, what's your, what are your pronouns? I can't keep up. It's not new. Castle was founded in 1994, but conversations around SEL started well before the term was actually coined, according to Schlund. There was a lot of activity, Schlund's words, there was a lot of activity happening in the 70s and the 80s where educators and researchers and parents were really sort of coalescing around the same insights and findings around students' learning, which was basically that their social, emotional, and academic growth were all deeply connected, she said. Really, which educators, researchers, and parents? The critical ones? The weird spiritualist ones? And the ones that support this, your, your Oprah wine moms, like, who are we talking about here, right? In the 70s and 80s, like I already told you, the social emotional learning movement cobbled itself into, really cannibalized from within, the already decidedly leftist program from James Comer. James Comer went to school with Alfred Kinsey, by the way. Uh, James Comer, who created the so-called whole child education model in Hartford, Connecticut in 1968. So we're talking about, there's a lot of activity happening in the 70s and 80s where educators, researchers, and parents were coalescing around certain ideas about education. And it turns out that what they were is they were hippies and 60s radicals that had left their outright radicalism and gone into education. Some of the findings were told were that students learn by how uh, emotionally connected they were to the material and that strong relationships and support in the classroom can help them perform better. There is some of that in the Comer whole child education stuff, but there's also lots of tendrils into Freire there. Uh, the emotional connection or engagement thing that Freire was so hooked up on that the, the real education is a political education, and the way that you get people engaged and wanting to learn the political context of their lives is to show it to them and radicalize them through it and then say, hey, let's learn more about it, like how to read it, politically and then actually in terms of literacy, which in practice very rarely happens because you end up radicalizing people who no longer see the point in reading, just like your kids uh, in school these days. Um, but that engagement thing is a hypothesis of critical education and has been, and I don't know that it's bearing out. How have our scores been doing? How have, how has education been going since that was a thing? Well, not better, actually. Not better in any regard. Schuland, her name's no longer Schlund, it's now Schuland, so we have a third spelling of her name, said researchers in different fields came to the same conclusions and were talking about these findings when the foundation for Castle was laid. It's weird that they didn't mention the Fetzer Institute in any of this yet. Quote, we brought together in the mid-1990s educators, parents, folks from neuroscience, from child development, from education science, from all aspects of this to talk about, quote, how do we really support children's learning and development? double end quote, 
Schuland said. So Schlund to Schlund to Schuland. I'm assuming this is all the same person. Maybe we should just call her Justina. Maybe we should just call her where the fuck we want, because it clearly doesn't matter to the author. Um, kind of flabbergasted by that. Give me a second. But yeah, okay, so they brought together in the mid-90s, educators, parents, folks, and nurses. It sounds really good, right? Folks, folks, folks. But this is like four out of five dentists agree. See, on the commercial, they talked to five dentists, four of whom they knew would agree right? They found four dentists who agree with whatever it is they're selling, got their endorsement, and they maybe talked to a fifth one and said four out of five. You see the trick? Because you think statistically it means 80% of all dentists, but what they actually might mean is that we handpicked a sample so that four out of the five people we talked to agreed with it. You see how that works? You see that little, little marketing trick? Well, here we are. Quote, and from that conversation and many conversations, from that conversation and many conversations, Castle was born. I don't see anything about the Fetzer Institute here. It's so weird that they don't, they aren't so proud of it when it comes to this kind of thing. They wouldn't want people in Iowa looking up how weird it is. They wouldn't want them reading A Course in Miracles. They wouldn't want to know that John Fetzer got some of his ideas of education and for his program by channeling the Archangel Michael with uh, a known psychic named Jim Gordon. They wouldn't want people to know that. And what we do is provide evidence-based guidance. They say it all the time, but it's actually not true. What they call evidence is um, horseshit. Uh, they misinterpret studies and basically make things up. What we do is provide evidence-based guidance and resources for schools and districts to be able to implement really high-quality social and emotional learning. Let me give you a quick, quick, short, short thing here. There's no such thing as high-quality social emotional learning. There's no such things. It doesn't exist. What there are really high quality, sophisticated directions by which you can use it to brainwash people. But if you're going to get the high quality stuff, you're also going to have to hire consultants, probably from Castle, which will probably make a lot of nonprofit money. But we get interrupted again. And how did it get to Iowa classrooms? Iowa, you know, famously hellbent to the left, right? Class crazy leftist state of Iowa. Those damn progressive farmers, um, one of the biggest ag states in the country. Everybody I talked to there seemed like they, except for at the university, seemed like they were full of plain sense, good, salt of the earth people worth knowing. How did it get to Iowa classrooms? As I said above, the Iowa Department of Education based its SEL guidance on Castle's work. Oh, Castle lobbied the Department of Education in Iowa and the Iowa Department of Education, a state education facility decided to be a good idea to force this on the state. The department started working on its SEL process in 2017, and it engaged with stakeholders from every corner of the state. Uh-oh, stakeholders. Iowa collaborators included students, school districts, area education agencies, colleges, youth service organizations, and more. Nationally, the department worked with CASEL, obviously, and the American Institutes for Research. The department didn't officially roll out its SEL framework until the beginning of the 2020 school year, which was after years of work. See, they spent three whole years laying all the groundwork in so that by the time they actually implemented it and people thought it was a catastrophe, it'd be really hard to get it out. We spent all this time, all this money, we revamped everything. We can't easily go back. So now we're in. That's what they say. Here's a detailed list of the steps the department took and the names of most of the people who worked on this year's long process. So here's this actual like little document, an image of this document in the middle of the article, which has tiny, tiny print that I can't read for you here too well. Appendix E, Iowa Social Emotional Learning Development Process and Stakeholder Teams. And I guess we could try to name names. Iowa Department of Education uh, used a quality review process that engaged national experts as well as a broad range of stakeholders from the department, area education agencies, local districts, schools, government agencies, higher education, state and local nonprofit organizations, and youth. The Iowa School Climate Transformation Grant 2014 2020, to 2020 was the catalyst. Oh, there was a grant. Hmm. The Iowa School Climate Transformation 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 Grant 2014 to 2020 was the catalyst for the focus on social emotional learning. They were paid to implement it, in other words. 
through a sequential and comprehensive process with national representatives from the American Institute for Research and the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning that is CASEL, the department engaged in a broad representation of agencies, organizations, and individuals who care deeply about the children and youth in Iowa. Care deeply about brainwashing them, it looks like. Representation was included across early childhood, K-12, out-of-school time, researchers, higher education, youth-serving organizations, children, and youth. Initial Research and Recommendations Work Group 2017. Let's find out who's behind this. The little print gets smaller on the name, so I will have to maybe fudge this. I wonder if I can make it bigger somehow. I don't know how to make it bigger. Let's try. The stakeholder group completed a literature review, research SEL initiatives throughout the United States, reviewed various frameworks for SEL, and made recommendations to the department regarding a process and timeline to move forward. They didn't mention cashing the checks from the school tri- transformation grant, school climate transformation grant, sorry. Based on the work of this stakeholder group, the department made the decision to use Castle's definition of SEL and the framework found to be grounded in solid social emotional research. You got bullshitted. In addition, the department responded to the recommendation to move to competencies, see, learning targets, C, and developmental indicators rather than standards. Oh, see how it works? We're not going to work on having standards or academic mastery or knowing math or anything anymore. We're now going to have competencies, learning targets, developmental indicators, which are going to work like little tools that you, little merit badges you can put in your digital backpack and have a nice social credit system in the future. The department also acted on the C4K recommended process by selecting a national expert advisor and a second group of stakeholders to move the work forward. That word stakeholder should creep you out because that's the word that that stakeholder capitalism, which is Klaus Schwab's fusion of socialism and capitalism is based on. And I'm just saying it means that you're going to have certain people who are stakeholders uh, who are actually designated as representatives of stakeholders by other experts. And they will make sure that all the experty things happen so that you, you know, don't make decisions that are not in your own best interest. The members of the 2017 work group included K. A. Augustine, Iowa Department of Education, Jenny Barnett, Green Hills AEA. And it goes on. Should I read them all? Sherry Blake, Jennifer Best, Susan Bruce, Sarah Brock, Jennifer Collins. There's a lot of women on this list. Elizabeth Cox, Jacqueline Daner, I think Christy Eckerd, Tron England, Jackie Fober, um, Megan Foley. Nick Pun or Nick Pone, I don't know, N I C P O N, Paul Hayes, Jennifer Jansen, Brenda Jenkins, Scott Jeske, Andrea Matheson, JD Meyer, Lillian Ortiz, Jamie Rendell, Melanie Reese, Nicole Scar, Jennifer Oli, or something, I can't tell what it is, U L E maybe, Wells. That's a lot of. Great. There's a whole second list of names in the SEL Competency Stakeholder Group 2018 um, that developed it further. Uh, developmental indicators and competencies and learning targets were nailed down for K-12, 3-5, 6-8, 9-12. through Recommendations for guidelines and rationale, verbal, vertical articulation, youth voice, there's a large number of members. People can definitely go read this for themselves and see. I'm not going to read all these names again. Then there was a advisory team put together at the state. Um, I don't know any Iowa people, so none of this means anything to me. Unfortunately, lots of Iowa Department of Education folks. And then the Iowa Department of Education SEL internal team, 2017 through 2019, to put it together. Um there are initiatives such as PBIS, project-based, is that what that is? PBIS, I forget what this stands for. It's not good. Um, PBIS, bullying prevention, career and technical education, project aware. Although the specific work was focused on SEL, the team addressed SEBH throughout to ensure that the SEL foundational resources and practices support trauma-informed strategies and work within the MTSS framework that includes a focus on mental health. See, that's how they're going to be able to turn the schools into little hospitals later. By focusing on youth mental health, they're going to be able to say that they're a mental health provider, and then they're going to be able to apply for hospital licensure. The school will, and then we'll be able to provide medical services and collect Medicaid money. And now you see the scam. This translates into the WISC model, the whole school. Remember that whole child thing from 
Comer back in 68, whole school, whole community, whole child model that everything's going to that's going to turn the school into like a Walmart big box fun formula that includes schooling, hospital, and other services and things for the children uh, and the whole community, really. And so on and on. And there's some names involved in this uh, implementation. But the most important part of this document, since I'm not going to focus on this document, was that it is the result of the Iowa School Climate Transformation Grant. See, the author would have you believe that they just decided to do this. But in fact, there was a grant behind it. The development, back to the article, the development and rollout, I'm surprised the author didn't congratulate him, her, itself, for tree, whatever, for uh, looking up a document. The development and rollout process was similar for Des Moines Public Schools, according to Finley. Finley? Finley. 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 Is it, I'm going back to check, is it spelled differently? So we're back to Schlund, where are we at here? Sorry, I know this is a bit silly, but... Um, I'm amused that this person spells names Finley before, and now it's finally. It's spelled two different ways. Just call people whatever the hell you want. <laughs> it's literally spelled two different ways. The other name is spelled three different ways. Quote, during the 2018-19 school year, the school board held community engagement sessions and invited students, families, community members, and DMP. Maybe this journalist can come and teach your kids, like, emotional skills, given their ability to, like, get keep people's names right. That would be great, wouldn't it? And maybe journalism skills, they could get a competency in not insulting uh, an idiotic journalist, not telling a journalist that, oh my god, you spelled... There's two experts you quoted, and you spelled both of their names multiple ways in a single article while patting yourself on the back for actually bothering to do your job and asking them questions. Anyway, this person could teach your, teach your children emotional skills like narcissism, self-aggrandizement, um, not giving a shit about your actual work, you know, all kinds of professional stuff. Maybe this person went through social emotional learning equipped schools in Iowa. During the 2018, this is Finley or Finley. Now we don't know how to say this person's name. Maybe we'll call her Allie because wasn't it Allison? Quote, during the 2018-19 school year, the school board held community engagement sessions and invited students, family, community members, and uh, Des Moines public school staff members to address the following two questions. What is the impact you want our school system to make on our students and what do you want students to know and be able to do? Okay pause before we continue. Sounds great. They had these community engagement sessions. Pause and ask yourself, who went to those? Who went to those in 2018 and 2019? Back before we knew that there was all these weird manipulations before in the blessed times before COVID-19 revealed to us how corrupt everything is, who went to those? Effing activists. That's who went to those. Students, families, community members, activists. So the left organizes really well. The right stays home or goes to the soccer game with their kids or actually has a life. And that's more than likely who went to those. That's more than likely how this was encouraged. And so what impact, uh, what is the impact you want our school system to make on students? Imagine what such people would answer. What do you want students to know and be able to do? In 2019, based on the community feedback, the Des Moines Public Schools School Board uh, adopted math and literacy goals and made safety and SEL a priority and board management limitation. I don't know how that actually worked out in practice. I can't speak to Des Moines Public Schools. Starting in April 2020, Des Moines Public Schools began to systematically implement social emotional learning at all levels and departments. Quote, while SEL seems like a new, quote, buzzword or process, it has always been an integral part of education, Finley said. Remember what I told you before about the dialectical inversion? It is all, even though it's brand new and you've never heard of it ever before, like this year, it's always been an integral part of education, she said. Schools should be safe spaces for students to learn and grow and be prepared for life outside of school in the community. Doesn't look like that's what's happening, but it's always been, you know, it got its name in 1994, but it's always been an integral part of education. We've always been doing it. We're just actually, we're doing the same thing that's always been happening. We're just doing it in a focused and directed way that doesn't cause all these harms like racism, sexism, and so on, right? Kids don't get frustrated and lose interest in math because we're teaching them to be mindful instead of to do math at all. So this wasn't just something schools rolled out overnight. And the article replies, nope, 
No, it rolled out over the course of a six-year strategic plan on a large grant. I presumably presume it was a large grant, on a grant anyway. This was a purposed effort. But is SEL replacing parents' role in teaching kids about morals and values? Let me brace myself before I read out loud what the author wrote, because the answer is yes, it is. And in fact, it's teaching Parent, it's teaching children that should be afraid of their parents who might not accept them for what they're learning. They might not accept the lessons they're learning. They are kind of out of touch and out of date, and maybe they don't understand what it means to be queer in 2023. Again, nope, they tell us. Parental buy-in and collaboration is necessary for it to work. See, you have to brainwash yourself and get on board. You have to do what the school's doing to your kids with your kids, or else it's just going to create an antagonistic situation. Now, that's what Mao said, too. Mao said that the parents that aren't going along with it are actually creating the antagonistic system by not going along with it. And then it, that means it's not going to work right. Quote, one of the key indicators for SEL implementation is authentic family partnerships. End quote. Now, that's Finley again, or finally maybe. We know what the word authentic means under woke, though. It means doing what the woke say. It's not an authentic relationship or an authentic engagement unless you agree with them. It's white fragility or something like that instead. Quote, we want families to have regular and meaningful opportunities to collaborate with schools and teachers. Collaborating, of course, means going along with. We know students are more successful when there are positive relationships between families and schools. So, of course, that's the end of the quote. So, of course, what I would imply is that if you're not having, you're not going along with their program, you're not creating a positive relationship within the family or with the school. I've heard stories several places throughout this country at this point of children who have gone through these school systems, and especially when they start to tip into being, say, identifying as bisexual or some sexual minority or something, gender minority, who become so afraid of their parents that they think that their parents will shoot them if their parents find out. They think that their parents, if they come and try to build a relationship with them, will be violent against them. They They will try to take them away from their friends group, might might actually attack or kill them. And there are stories where, where these children have actually, in a very Maoist sense, prepared for self-defense against their parents, and sometimes involving weapons, uh, like bats and things of, of the kind. That's what social-emotional learning is doing, because you see families, if you're not being authentic with your opportunities to collaborate and make, building these positive relationships— Parental buy-in and collaboration is necessary for it to work. So you're actually the problem. And they're teaching your kids that you're the problem, that you're not going along with it. And so what does our fake interlocutor say? This all sounds reasonable. No, it doesn't. It is made to sound reasonable, but it doesn't sound reasonable if you ask a question. You scratch this hippie bullshit and there's fascism everywhere underneath it. This all sounds reasonable, but can you provide some real-world examples of how it's used? Remember that word problem I gave you with little Johnny riding? I know little Johnny's a dirty joke set up, but uh, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, Little Johnny riding with his parents to the amusement park? That's a real-world example. That's from an actual SEL training in the deeply blue state of Indiana. Uh, Another farm state. One starts with an I. It's close to Iowa. They're basically the same place, right? I don't think I'm allowed to say that. Um, Sure. So in the Van Meter School District... A teacher has morning meetings with her students. Oh, that's great. Uh, Morning meetings? Anybody want to go to a meeting? Like, do your freaking job. During recent meetings, students were given the the option to share something they enjoyed over winter break and were encouraged to create a goal for the new year or identify an area they would like to improve. And again, this was optional. So in one school district... One teacher has morning meetings with her students, and during recent meetings this year, written in February, they talked about winter break and what you might do to improve. So obviously what's happening in SEL is great. And then you think you think that I'm like being unfair here, right? So our fake questioner says, that's it. And the author says, yup. Yeah, that's it. Talk to the kids. How was your winter break? Yeah, let's have a meeting. You guys want to improve this year? You got any goals? Let's talk about a goal. Let's let's set a goal. I got another. That's it. Yep. That's what it says. That's what it says. That's literally what it says. Lies, damned lies, and SEL. I got another example for you. A freshman student at, so apparently not yup, because there's a second example. A freshman student at a Des Moines high school contacted finally, we're back to finally now, we're not Finley anymore, we're finally again, after she noticed how hard the district's transportation department and bus drivers worked. 
no period, capital V, student, wanted to do something kind for these folks. With an assist from her assistant principal, the student developed a plan for all the students in her school to write cards to their bus drivers. On Valentine's Day, the bus drivers will receive these cards and some treats. Wow! SEL teaches people to be so thoughtful because of this. I can't believe that's in this article. In fact, neither can our fake interlocutor or fake questioner, who is the author himself, itself, herself. That's a nice story, but how does it fit in with SEL? Just sounds like, quote, Iowa nice. Oh, so you see, Iowa, they're appealing to your values, your sense of a nice culture, so that you'll keep being nice. And you're saying, see that thing that you guys do that you call Iowa nice? There's a Nebraska nice, there's Utah nice. There's a lot of nices out there, by the way. Montana nice, I think everybody's nice. And niceness is one of those things that they literally intentionally manipulate because if you're being nice, you're not being mean. You're not standing up to them. You're not saying no because that would be mean. That wouldn't be nice. They're using your values against you. It's one of their favorite little tricks. I'll let fi- she's she's back to Finley. I'll let Finley explain this part. How does it fit in with SEL? It just sounds like Iowa nice. Quote, this student took the initiative on her own to create and implement a plan to make someone else feel good. Never mind that it also required everybody in the entire school district to have to do something, whether they wanted to or not, including writing cards and maybe uh, gathering treats. She is displaying that she has social awareness and can see the perspective of others. She is recognizing the strengths and other members of the school community. She's white knighting kids. She is recognizing the strengths and other members of the school community and is expressing gratitude. No, she's not. She's making everybody else do it, too. She is showing her relationship skills by communicating effectively with different departments across the district and showing leadership in her school. Yeah, she's a, she's a great little party, a little, great little red guard party uh, party apparatus in the making. This student is showing self awareness by demonstrating her efficacy and agency to create a plan on her own and share it with students across the school. Well, she didn't share it with students across the school. She she shared it with the assistant principal, who then thought it was a good enough idea to make all the other students participate. One single student did this, so it would be interesting to imagine imagine the ripple effect we could have if a world of people who value themselves and others did something similar. So if everybody went to an authority figure and made everybody else have to do a bunch of stuff for other people that they decided are a cause celeb, then we could imagine uh, what kind of a world... It sounds like socialism. Oh, apparently our interlocutor sees that too. Again, this doesn't sound all that bad. Oh, we're not to, this sounds reasonable. We're now to not all that bad. But I noticed you haven't directly countered the senator's accusations around indoctrination, socialism, Marxism, CRT, and the LGBTQ agenda. (laughs) Well, SEL has been under attack nationally since 2021, give or take. You're welcome, America. I will take a little credit for that, if I may. And is often and is often attached to the ongoing vilification of CRT. CRT doesn't need to be vilified. It is a villain. It, do you not understand? It's Marxism using race, which is even nastier than economics. It doesn't. It's not being vilified. It is a villain. CRT does not need vilification. It is a villain. Vilification would be turning something into a villain. That's not a villain. CRT is a villain. The, that's a important difference. So it's it's often attached to the ongoing vilification of CRT, which again is not something taught in K through 12 school. Except we know that's a lie. So we know this author now is not just a shameless propagandist, but also a direct liar. But we also already heard that in public education. But the practice and terminology existed long before then. See above. See. It's not even new. It's always been happening. It's good. And it's attached to this thing that's nonsense and bad. Shameless propaganda. Lies, damned lies, and SEL. Here's a good NPR story that talks about this in another story from the Washington Post. You've got to be kidding me. That's so funny. Uh, the NPR article, I'm not going to click on it or read it, is from September 26, 2022, how social emotional learning became a front line in the battle against CRT in Washington Post, 3rd of March, sorry, uh, 28th of March, 2022, social emotional learning and critical race theory, something or another, I'm not clicking on it. 
Also, as embarrassing as it was, I did ask Finley and Schlund, did you ask them what it was like to have their names misspelled this many times in your friggin' article? Like, just kind of like you randomly chose letters to represent their names? Also, as embarrassing as it was, I did ask Finley and Schlund about the things Senator Salmon and some of her supporters have mentioned. They both vehemently deny these connections. Quote, we're now in Schlund land. Who's staying Schlund for the moment? There's a lot of politics out there and politicking out there, Schlund said. I will just emphasize the point I made earlier, which is social-emotional learning is about helping students to develop their own perspectives and points of view to listen to diverse perspectives of their peers, of others in their communities, and to be able to take all that information and make good decisions for themselves to achieve their goals to contribute to their communities. The other thing I'll say is that if you want children to be prepared for the world at large, for the future that they will be inheriting, they need to be able to learn how to communicate with people who are different than them, to be able to listen to diverse opinions, to be able to understand who they are in relationship to other people, and that's all part of social and emotional learning. Here's the thing, kids. Let me make this real clear to you. They always say this. They're, we need social emotional learning so that kids will learn how to communicate with people who are different than them. You know what? We haven't actually had any problems with that until all this microaggression, critical race theory, everything's an offense came into the picture. You're saying that, oh, you're just saying that from your position of privilege, but no, I'm not. I'm watching how people interacted in the past, and this is bullcrap. People were doing just fine learning how to communicate with one another across all kinds of differences, religious, political, racial, sexual, um, gender, everything. There was no actual problem, nationalities, origins. There was no significant problem. This problem has been ginned up by things like CRT and queer theory and turned into something really horrendous. I mean, actually, comedians did a better job of breaking down some of the barriers in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and so on than any of this, which has actually inflamed the problem and made everything an offense. So if you want more of teaching your kids by tinkering around in their psychology, more of learning how to take an offense to everything so they can have the ability to, quote, communicate with people who are different than them on terms set by leftists, by all means, maybe support social emotional learning. Be able to listen to diverse opinions. Nobody was having a problem with that, actually, until the diverse opinion that people weren't listening to, which is critical theory, excuse me, critical theory or Marxism, people weren't listening to that one. We we're like, that's communist bullshit. We're not going to do that. And then so they said, you're not listening to diverse opinions. And they tucked it into racial opinions. They made the true capital B black perspective, as we see with Larry Elder, uh, for example, or any number of other examples. Um, the true capital B black perspective has to be the critical race black perspective and so on. The true gay voice isn't gays against groomers. They're not even really gay apparently, because they're not queer activists. So it's the queer theory voice. And this is substantiated not only in their activism, which we all see, and in the poisoned society that we all endure and live in and try to metabolize now, but it's also rife throughout the literature. The literature, the academic literature behind these fields is all written through with this. We could talk for hours about David Halperin and the book Saint Foucault that he wrote in the early 1990s, maybe 1995, if I remember correctly, um, where he says this about the queer versus gay. We could talk about the same thing with an Eve Sedgwick, Epistemology of the Closet from 1990, uh, where there, uh, Gail Rubin in 1984 and Thinking Sex, which I read as a podcast series, you can hear them trying to negotiate a new radical politics of what it means to be queer, aside from what it means to merely happen to be gay. Um, so to be able to listen to diverse opinions is just Gnostic pablum that means, and it sounds nice, but in fact what it means is listening to the radical perspectives that they think are the only legitimate ones. And to be able to understand who they are in relationship to other people, again, on whose terms. Everything that they just said sounds good until you start asking the questions, do you mean from a radical left perspective or something else? And of course it means from a, they don't see it as a radical left perspective, they see it as the one true perspective that everybody must hold or maybe have to be re-educated or eliminated. Okay, we're at the very end. Ty rushing, he, her, shim, whatever your pronouns are. Anything else? 
Did I mention that SEL is optional? That's what he says. SEL is optional, parents. The last word. Anything else you want to bring up? He asks himself. Did I mention that SEL is optional? The Iowa Department of Education provides a framework and resources, but districts can choose. Oh, sorry, it wasn't your kids. It's districts. But they do have to meet those competency targets, which are met by this program. They could do something else. It's just that the Department of Education said this is the way that it would be best to do it, and they've given all the guidance and money in this direction through those grants, and that you have to do that to get the federal money that comes in through education. Your district won't get the federal money from the Federal Department of Education unless you're meeting these competencies according to ESSA, the Every Student Succeeds Act, which is the uh, advancement of um, Common Core and No Child Left Behind that shifts it fully into the competency model and requires non-academic competencies like social and emotional competencies. The Iowa Department of Education provides a framework and resources, but districts can choose whether or not they will use it. See, you don't have to do this one. It's just we'll make it really easy for you to do this one, and good luck finding a competitor because they don't exist. Also, it was implemented under Governor Kim Reynolds' administration. You know, the same woman who signed the law that, outlined CR that outlaws CRT in Iowa. See, so they got a Republican not knowing what they were signing on to uh, to sign on to SEL while banning CRT, while CRT started to rise in visibility as a major Marxist problem in the country, not realizing that SEL yet was a Maoist education program hiding in the, way, in the wings. Like, what, you know, Kim Reynolds, is she just like a bad governor or something for doing this, for signing SEL in and then uh, banning CRT? Is she just a hypocrite? What other governor would have done that? Or she just, what? No, Ron DeSantis did that too. Ron DeSantis, you know, the one who's like the leader in education. So you remember that bill called the Stop Woke Act that got all that press, uh, press and attention and the left lost its fucking mind over it in Florida last summer? The Stop Woke Act. How much of a slap in the face would it be if that bill actually advanced a woke agenda, like social emotional learning, like exactly what section four of that bill does? Wouldn't that be a giant, like, giant slap in the face of the most anti-woke leader-like governor in the country if in his bill that's called the Stop Woke Act, it mandates social emotional learning in section four. Wouldn't that just be humiliating? And wouldn't Marxists love to humiliate somebody like Ron DeSantis by doing that? Because that's what happened. So you have to start asking questions. How did that happen? Well, with Kim Reynolds here in Iowa or in Ron DeSantis down in Florida. So I guess they're in fairly good company in this case with each other. It's entirely plausible that the governor's office did not yet realize that this anodyne-sounding, saccharine-sounding language of self-management, awareness, blah, 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 indicated anything. As I said, I've talked to officials in some states. Um, Florida turns out to be one of them, and they don't know what Castle is yet. Somehow they are so behind the ball that they don't, behind the eight ball, they don't know what they're signing into law when the language sounds good and isn't too obviously explicit. It does not like a copy-paste off of Castle's website that landed in Section 4 of the Stop Woke Act in Florida. It's kind of craftily worded, but all five Castle competencies are there explicitly by name, all five of them. They are definitely 100% there, and that's what education in Florida is going to focus on, on the Stop Woke Act. So we're going to put woke right in there, right? And so then people like Ty Rushing here, he, him, tree self, bird, whatever is her, it, it, somebody's pronouns are, can write something at the end like, oh, ha, 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 you think it's so bad it was signed by the same person who banned CRT in the state. Oh, so it can't be that bad. It's actually something people like you should support. And they can say that because people like Kim Reynolds got tricked because they didn't know this language yet. They did not have somebody who was on this because the left has been building this out for two decades and over two decades and is very crafty. Ron DeSantis got tricked. But you want to ask, you know, with the, Ron DeSantis, who wrote that bill? Who wrote that bill with Ron? Who got that bill in front of the legislature? Who helped them write it? And what anti-woke activists help write social emotional learning right into the law in Florida in the Stop Woke Act and the biggest slap in the face that I know of so far 
in any of these anti-woke bills. I wonder who, who who was responsible for helping draft that legislation and making sure that it was up to scratch before any legislators pushed it through and the governor signed it in the freest state in the nation, I'm told, Florida, where they you are very free, but they wrote into the Stop Woke Act that they're going to brainwash your kids using social emotional learning. I wonder who was behind that. Probably somebody who didn't know what they were reading, kind of like Governor Reynolds and Governor DeSantis, because otherwise we have to assume nefarious intent, and that might not be fair. I don't know that I should assume nefarious intent in Kim Reynolds or D- Governor DeSantis, whoever drafted that bill. But these are the things that I wanted to bring up. Social emotional learning, lies, damned lies, and social emotional learning, or SEL. Um, when they present it to you in the media, they lie to you about it. When they present it to you in marketing materials, they lie to you about it. They leave out all the relevant details. They leave out exactly what it is and present to you something that sounds very good, that you, in fact, would have to be both kind of a bad person, kind of a shithead, and positively stupid to not want to go along with. That all sounds reasonable. They present it to you like this in a mocking tone, in a mocking format of an article to make it look like only a hateful hick could possibly be against this. Not good salt of the earth people with common sense in the state of Iowa. Not moms for liberty who are actually spending an inordinate amount of time studying these things in depth, digging deeply into Castle and its origins, Castle and its funders, the organizations that support these initiatives outside of Castle and the Fetzer Institute, digging deeply into these universally hard left, except some of the school choice movement programs. And then obviously whatever or whoever wrote the Stop Woke Act for Ron DeSantis to sign um, or those legislators in Florida that got suckered into it. Um, Some of whom I've actually spoken to and they were shocked to find out that it was in there uh, and asked me the the exact question. Who who helped us write this bill? I'm like, you were there. I wasn't. You didn't call me. Uh, So I don't know. Um, So at any rate, uh, they will lie to you about it. Lies damned lies in SEL. It took me a very long time to go through this short piece of crap article, two hours to go through this short piece of crap article, just to document in some sense and articulate the depth and scope of the lies that they put out and their little mocking uh, cute box that promotes social emotional learning in the state of Iowa. So my... um, Congratulations go to the state of Iowa and to Senator Sandy Salmon for taking this step. My encouragement goes to the governor, Governor Reynolds, that uh, she will understand what has happened in her state with this, with this bill coming to the fore, that a statewide debate shall ensue and that social emotional learning shall be struck from the state of Iowa. And I will become a national leader on protecting children and enshrining parental rights uh, from Maoist brainwashing and manipulation in schools under a nice sounding brand name like social emotional learning. And I pray that this uh, debate will then go national and we will start to burn this scourge out of every state that will have the political will and capital to do it. Uh, And like I said, may Iowa be a brave leader in this. If you are in the state governance of Iowa, uh, I encourage you in that direction. If you are a resident of the state of Iowa or somebody connected to one where you care, I encourage you also in this direction, but also to speak up and speak out to them to make this clear for them. Uh, Moms for Liberty in Iowa, I give you the biggest pat on the back. Moms for Liberty National should be proud of you. Um, Our nation should be proud of you. I'm proud of you for bringing this up, for pushing this issue, uh, and keep up the good work. 